tonight we have these four amazing photographers and the first photographer i will bring to the stage here on the webinar is actually paul Laukley from norway so i will actually just actually leave you for the for on this stage but you you probably have to tell us how you work with the Fujifilm as a tool in general, but because you you work wide with the, the whole system, not even the, not only the GFX system, but you work with all kinds of aspects uh, 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 with our cameras. So take us along. How did you get started with this? Actually, the the first uh, can you hear me? By the way, yeah. yeah. Uh, my first uh, experience with uh, with Fujifilm was the actually the X twenty. Uh, way way back, um, we were uh, doing a shoot in New York, and I I stopped uh, to to get it uh, at B and H in New York. Um, and I work uh, part of my team. My wife and I work as a team. And after twenty minutes, she grabbed the camera and never gave it back. So uh, I had to go back and get another one. Um, and I think the first thing that sort of struck me was the film simulations, just like the ease of everything. How 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 it just feels like um, it feels like a camera and not a computer. Um, and I think this is like the main thing. I mean, I'm such a fanboy, but I'm not uh, the only thing I'm really a fanboy or, or about, I think, is actually Fujifilm cameras. Um, I'm, I'm one of the guys who went from Mac to PC, so I'm not like into sort of gadgets and things really. But when it comes to these cameras, it's just that the total package. Um, uh, it just feels the way it did back in the day when I started photographing. It was, um, it was, uh, it's almost like a revelation the first time you started using these cameras. And now, like all the other, not all of them, but many of the other producers are, are kind of trying to emulate this this style. And I don't, I don't think it should be called like it's not old school or vintage. It's just the way the things that work the best. And then when the GFX system came along. For me, the way I work as a commercial photographer, that was uh, it was just a godsend, and it just completed everything. So it's uh, it's really been something that's uh, that's really changed the way I work. Actually, I have to be honest. I I used to work on digital uh, like camera backs, uh, but now with um, with the GFX uh, the GFX 100 is like our daily workhorse, uh, combined with the XT4. Uh, we do both film and we do stills, and this this package is just complete. So that's where we're at these days. And you 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 have some work to show us. You do you do both stills and film, and and mix it and combine these uh, uh, both the X system and the GFX actually. On yeah, yeah, we do uh, we do. I mean, we really do use both of them. Uh, we did uh, last weekend. We did a, a skiing brand, and then. Basically, we do sort of all the, the branding shots on the GFX. If there's some action shots and we need some more speed, then we just switch over to the to the X-T4. Um, and it's just a seamless thing. It's uh, Sometimes I'll even just like put that one memory card over in the other just to, to not spread the data out. The menus are the same, but it, the overall feel of it is the, is the same. And, and, um, and I don't use any optional optics. I just use the Fujifilm lenses because I think they're... They're amazing, and and um, and I mean I, I I was shooting a lot of stuff on the 110, and then the 80 came along. Now though now it's that one. It's just every time something comes along, it's just really really good. And I think that's the. Um, I know this sounds like I'm such a fanboy, but it's it's because I am. Yeah, you are. Um, you can definitely tell that you are. But but you you're honest about it because you 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 also push our cameras to the limit. Yes, we do. And that's I mean, we, what we want to, and you push it all the way. And yeah, we really beat them up. And and um, I can uh, I can show some stuff. I mean, uh, when we were when we were asked to do to do to talk to this, uh, it's really hard to just choose stuff. But uh, I'll just start uh, show some some things here. Yeah. Um, so like this is for a, an artist called Alan Walker. These are all like composite jobs. But when we're working with uh, people. Of this kind of level, who literally have billions of of streams and listens, um, it's very, it's very, it has to be right. You know, the files need to be perfect. And it's like you mentioned before, uh, this is uh, in collaboration with a, a, a computer company called ASUS. 
But all of these people that are working on these projects, they just expect everything to be great and perfect. And I think that uh, what we what we see is that the way we're when we're shooting is that you always just trust the camera. Uh, and I think uh, when the GFX 100 came, uh, I think that's like the best camera that's ever made. Um, and I've really had pretty much. I mean, I've I've got like a what twenty eight year old long year long career now and i think this is it's just the optimal thing for me um and um and it's just everything about it it's like you mentioned some of the things like the color depth uh the sharpness i mean the, the resolution is kind of an obvious thing but i've also worked on on digital backs from i'm not going to name any companies but where the pictures just don't feel like photography it feels very digital it feels uh uh yeah it's just like too crisp and too sharp I don't know how the the Fujifilm engineers have done this, but for me, these most of this stuff just works right out of the camera. Um, so, so whenever we're doing this kind of stuff, it just it's just so easy to 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 uh, hand it over to do post production, to do design, all of this kind of stuff. So this is like this is for Coca Cola. Yeah, I would like to have a sip with that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's the the thing is like. As an example, uh, this shot here is not really part of, of that campaign, but at that location we were shooting, all of a sudden the light came through this window and we just placed the uh, Alan Walker on. You know, and it's just, you can always do stuff like this. It's super fast. You, It kind of, uh, the GFX is so simple to use that like I could give it to my mother and, and she'd make it work. And I think that's the whole idea of it. it there's no cables there's nothing it's just a camera it's fast it's it's instant the autofocus is precise uh it does like all of these things uh very very well you, you um, mentioned you mentioned autofocus because that's when you talk about medium format that's a a, a big word that you talk about autofocus does it actually work that fast because uh, we know it i know it but the uh, does yeah, it, it does. I mean, good enough for, for 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 a commercial job. Yeah, I mean, it definitely uh, the the way the, the kind of work that I do for sure. Um, I mean, uh, to like honestly, like if you're shooting like sports, for example, I'll grab like the the XT4 because it is faster. You can like hammer faster, you know. Uh, but you gotta you know step back a little bit and realize what it is. You're you're shooting absolutely enormous files uh with uh with crazy color depth and and just insane resolution so um it to in a in a package that's really compact like the 100s it's like you can just throw it over your shoulder and to work with this kind of um power if you will uh, on the previous system that we had before we went uh, got the gfx uh it was just a whole it was a lot of weight it was a lot of camera um, and I think that that whole combination of, of user, um, how do you say it, user friendliness, speed, accuracy, all of these things, it just combines. So, for example, like mo most of our work is teamwork. You know, I don't, I'm not, I don't do, I'm not the photographer. Like I, I work with my wife. She works as an uh, art director, sometimes makeup artist. Uh, Matthias, my assistant, he, he does a lot of our editing. And then uh, the, uh, we, we handed this is done by uh, Stockholm creators. Uh, a little fun fact, uh, this was a bit of a scandal, this shot, because that bow is strung the wrong way around. So that actually made national news when that poster came out. Yeah. Um, but the, the point is that when, we, when whatever we're handing these things over to, um, uh, everyone is just like, it's perfect. Because you can bend it, twist it, it's, you know, whatever way you want. Um, Obviously, we could also show. I use the I use the the GFX also for a lot of just like natural stuff when I'm photographing my kids, uh, but we don't really have time to go into it. So I had to choose these kinds of jobs to to show. But um, uh, the, the beauty of it is how fast we work. I think that's like there's a lot of talk about like the technical aspects of like resolution, you know, 16 bits, 14 bits, all this kind of stuff. But the, the, the amazing thing is that we do even like, we've done um, cinema advertising uh, shot on the GFX 100 in full, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's that whole package where you just get all of it in one package. And when you combine that with the X-T4, for me, it's like we're, we're there. It's, you know, we don't really need anything else. It, it's a, when, when, I, when I hear you and, and when I look at the stuff you do, you're a great example of uh, actually working with, with two systems, which makes sense. You can work from, from you can actually take the whole, uh, you know, width of the system and, 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 and as a tool, you can actually make everything you want with the, those two systems. Uh, where you need the resolution, where you need the speed, and where you do this, it's it's a great that you actually have different kind of tools in in, in your daily life. That's that, it, it makes sense. Uh, it does, and it's uh, for me. It's uh, I'm a, I'm a bit of a hyperactive type of person, and and uh, if if stuff doesn't work, I just get really annoyed, like extremely annoyed. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, I've never, you know, like. The, whenever there's been an issue with with uh, the GFX, I just pop the battery out, put it back in, and then it sort of resets, and, and you're back in order. But I've had previous systems once where I was in a, up in the forest, and in the middle of the shoot, the camera demanded a firmware update, and we didn't even have cell phone coverage. Yeah. So, so yeah. it's uh, it's a bit of a thing. But uh, um, also, um, we um, uh, we prepared just like a little thing uh, just to show the way we work. So maybe uh, Fleming, if you could just play that little thing. Yeah. I think it, this is really, really a, a, a great way to show how you actually work and and, and how versatile your job is. Uh, that you actually need it in all different kind of scenarios, and that's actually uh, the the point. You you're a great test person um, in that matter because you can test it in in all different kind of ways, and still there's a camera for each individual uh, photographer. If you're only aiming at uh, two disciplines, but you're actually aiming at every on everything, uh, uh, almost. If you get the job, you 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 take it and you deliver. So I still have I still haven't managed to break one. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 I haven't broken one. I've broken some lenses, but no, no, no camera yet. No, oh, no, no, that's great. I don't know whether we have some questions for you. Um, which often just listen because it's so exciting. And Fleming, has there been any questions to Paul during this session? 
Yeah, I think that maybe uh, Paul can answer this one from Cor Buck, who's asking whether you've ever shot with the GFX in very low temperatures. Yes, I have. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I haven't shot with it in like Tommy Simonson style temperatures, uh, but uh, we have shot with it in very, very cold weather. And um, the only thing that's been a problem is that obviously the battery kind of runs out. You have to keep some batteries extra and keep them warm. But like I never had like a mal malfunction of the camera or anything like that. No. So, but I mean, I think any camera, any battery, if it's like minus 10 degrees, it'll, you know, <laughs> it won't yeah. last too long. Yeah. Just the most, most important stuff is that the shutter doesn't... Yeah, no, I never had anything like that. No. But we're always always very careful uh, when we work out, outdoors in Norway. We don't bring the cameras in and out and in and out. Uh, if we're outdoors, we leave them outdoors so they just stay cold so we don't get the condensation and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So it's uh, fantastic to see how you work uh, with the with the the cameras and 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 you are actually uh, making it you know at the highest hardest test that we can actually pull together with tommy and we've seen him in another webinar when he goes uh, up way up north in in 30 minus degrees and and he's on his he's on his way to africa now actually now africa yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so as you understand it's from 50 degrees celsius to minus 40 degrees celsius and 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 you should just be able to bring it along like that. So uh, it's fantastic. I, th I think like the point I, I want to make about this stuff is that um, if you can, if you have a camera, if I can just show you something real quick, uh, yeah. hang on a second. Because the thing with this is like, obviously we, uh, we use a lot of lighting. We shoot a lot of lighting all the time. You know, we do this kind of stuff, but a lot of the stuff we do is just natural light. And some so these these images are just straight out of camera. They're not really they're not really done anything with you know. Um, and I think that's the kind of stuff that that really appeals to me with with uh, with the GFX system. This is for a vintage clothing uh, chain in in Norway. But it's just you can just take it out and shoot and just uh, use uh, you know the film simulations. None of them are like overboard. And I hate retouching. I really detest de retouching. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we do, even for some of the bigger clothing chains, is no, we don't actually retouch the pictures. We just so, we just sort of put, you know, pull yeah. a little contrast and then just hand it to them. Okay, that, um, that's that's uh, actually surprises me that, but but many tells me that you can actually do that, and but you actually, yeah shorten down your your production time and yeah a lot you know um, um I, I know that even like uh, scott johnson who's an english photographer he just uses he just shoots jpegs now and just gives yeah. it to the client yeah. but i think that a lot of the, the, my, the idea is that you can shoot natural lighting you can do um uh, this is like uh, his name is karsten varholm is a olympic uh, world record holder this is really was done for kind of a bit of a cheesy advertising campaign and just as he was changing his clothes he was just the light was nice and he just turned around and took a picture of him you know it's that kind of stuff that it's instant you can really this is uh Kasper Rud, he's a is a tennis player this is not really part of the job but it's just there and i think that's the the idea that you can be super super fast uh and and sort of and just do stuff um uh, that's instant you know you don't you really never have to like plan um for these kind of shots you know uh, and i think that that kind of um that kind of i don't know how to say it but it's uh, um i don't know the word for it but uh, it's instinctive you can just shoot when you see stuff you know what i mean it's like it's almost just like working with like a little point and shoot yeah. So like these uh, these things here are just like from um, from a band called Orabrot that we work a lot with, and we're just shooting in the light that we have, you know. And that's a really really nice thing to to be able to do with this stuff. It's awesome. So I think that you know if I was gonna. If I was going to do a selling point for for these camera systems, it wouldn't actually be the resolution. Obviously, that's amazing. You know, like 100 megapixels is great, 
the color depth yeah yeah it's super super good but i mean obviously there's other other systems that have that kind of stuff but what they don't have is that amazing like versatile package it's compact it's fast it's uh, trustworthy so uh, yeah i'm a fanboy all the way man i love it i absolutely love the gfx i think it's the best thing that ever happened mm-hmm. yeah yeah and, uh, and when i see you you you, you told uh, after the Fotokina some years after Fotokina you told on a on a talk you had in denmark that uh, sell your gear because this is really good yeah and i was right too man (laughs) and you were standing there with maybe there was five of these cameras in the nordics or just nearby the nordics and said sell your cameras this would be awesome and yeah this is gonna uh, be the thing and it did become the thing and it is the thing yeah and i i'm not gonna you know i don't want to like talk down any any other systems but i did have a very 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 expensive camera system and uh when i tried to sell it uh you know i was i should have listened to myself because when i did sell it i hardly got anything for it nobody wanted it (laughs) but but as you say the versatility versatility in the car the system that it's light and you can bring it along on every shoot and you just have it uh if if you have it nearby you get the shot so that's uh yeah. yeah and also it's not something i don't feel like it's my watch you know what i mean i treat it as a tool it's a hammer it's uh i bring it out in the rain we just we just bring it everywhere i'm not like treating i mean it's obviously a very expensive i, I wouldn't even like compared to what you get for it, i wouldn't even call it expensive but it's it's you know from yeah. what you get back uh, this is how we make a living so for us we i wouldn't call it expensive even i think oh. it's very reasonably priced to be honest mm-hmm. but uh, but it's still you know for most uh, people if especially if you're not professional it is expensive but we don't treat it like it's uh it's a jewelry or or something we treat it like a tool and yeah. it just takes a lot of beating and uh, yeah so it's yeah. uh it's it's the shit, man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Thank you very much for showing your pictures and movie and telling about how you work with this system in your daily life and, and just Fuji uh, in common. Uh, and we know that and we can definitely point out that you tested to the limit. So that's great. So and and we will keep on hearing from you when we bring new stuff to, to the market. So we'll give it to you. Can't wait, man. Yeah, All yeah. Right, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome.